This is Linda Sadgas from ScrappersGuide.com here to tell you about the changes and new features of Photoshop Elements 8. The Windows and Mac versions will be released within a few weeks of each other, which is good news for Mac users who usually have to wait much longer. There's actually quite a bit to tell you about Photoshop Elements 8, so I'll explain some of the features in this video and other items I'll just mention here and explain more fully in other videos. I'll start with one of my favorite changes. For several versions now, and I'm in Photoshop Element 7 at the moment, we've been able to drag from a file on the desktop to a thumbnail in the project bin without a problem. But going the other direction, dragging from a thumbnail to a file on the desktop, turned the file into a smart object, which changed the size and didn't allow you to edit it without simplifying it first. That has finally changed in Photoshop Elements 8. Now you can drag from a thumbnail and it does not turn into a smart object. Since it also adds a file name to the layer, it's very helpful for keeping track of the papers and elements you use so you can acknowledge the designer when you post a scrapbook page. The only caveat is this. Here I have a multi-layer document which you can tell by all the layers over here in the layers panel. If you drag from the thumbnail of a multi-layer document in the project bin to a file on the desktop, it will copy the entire layered file in one flattened layer. So only drag single layered files from the project bin, and I'll press Ctrl Z in Windows or Command Z on a Mac to undo that. There are lots of other changes in the user interface. I'll just give you a brief overview here and explain things more fully in another video. Palettes are now called panels. The shortcuts icons on the Layers panel have been relocated to the bottom of the panel. There's a new panel called the Adjustments panel, and you can access it from the Window menu, this one right here, or you can simply make an adjustment. So if you click on the black and white circle and click on Hue Saturation, the Adjustments panel will pop up and you can make your changes right here. I'll just click on the tab across the top to hide that. Panels can be rearranged in many different ways to suit your style, which I'll show you in a separate video. Press Tab to hide everything but the menu bar. Press Tab again to bring them back. Press Shift Tab to hide the panel bin and the project bin, and Shift Tab to bring them back again. On the desktop, you can choose to view your open photos and documents in tabbed windows via the new Arrange menu. And I'll click on this first one right here, and now all my files are in tabs. The Edit tab above the panel bin now has a drop-down menu where you can choose Edit Full, Edit Quick, and Edit Guided. So that's just a quick overview of the desktop. To learn more detail on how to work with the desktop, be sure to watch my video on the user interface changes. Photoshop Elements 8 now has guides. Just click and drag a guide from the vertical or horizontal ruler, and they'll snap to the object you have selected in the Layers panel. Then you can line things up with it. I'll drag out another guide, this time from the top, and it'll snap to the bottom of that one. And now I can bring other things right next to it, and they'll snap to the line as well. To get rid of guides, click and drag them back into the ruler with the Move tool, or you can choose View, Clear Guides. Also, the grid now has a keyboard shortcut. Press Control apostrophe in Windows or Command apostrophe on a Mac to show and hide the grid. The next few items I'll just mention here and explain more fully in other videos. There's a new tool called the Recompose tool. This tool is nested with the Crop tool in the toolbar. It helps you change the spatial relationship of objects in a photo without harming the objects of interest. So, for example, you can change a photo from a horizontal orientation to a vertical orientation. With the right photo, this is really extraordinary. There's a new menu item called Panoramic Exposure found under the File New Menu. The idea is to take two exposures of the same scene 
and use panoramic exposure to merge them together to create one great shot. When it works, it's pretty amazing. I especially like it for adding the sky back in when a normal exposure blows out the sky. In other situations, though, it tends to leave a halo effect. I explain how it works and demonstrate the strong and weak points in my video about panoramic exposure. The next couple of items are Windows only since they involve the organizer, which is not available on the Mac version. There's a new tool called People Recognition that helps you tag individual faces in a photo. As you tag, the program learns to recognize the faces in other photos to help you tag those photos more quickly. This is really a very nice feature and it's fun to use. By the way, Mac users have a similar tagging tool in iPhoto. The organizer has also improved the full screen and side-by-side -side views found in the display menu. You can toggle between full screen and side-by-side -side right here. And you can also use the film strip view over here to change to other photos. Move your mouse over the left side to access quick edit and also quick organize and tagging of your photos. Press Escape to return to the normal view. Photoshop Elements 8 does have a few quirks that you should be aware of. In Windows, the Maximize button takes you nowhere. Everything disappears except for the photo, and all you can do, unless you're really good with keyboard shortcuts, is to minimize the photo again. Also, the Transform tool is a little quirky with shapes. Pixel layers and type layers work as they always have. Clicking and dragging from a corner handle maintains the original proportions, but shapes vary in this regard. I'll press Ctrl T in Windows or Command T on a Mac to get the transform outline. Notice that the options bar does not have constrained proportions checked. So if I click and drag from a corner handle, I can get distortion. Pressing the Shift key will do the opposite of what is the default in the Options bar, so I must press the Shift key to maintain my original proportions. I'll click on the check mark to accept that. And now if I move a photo onto my page and use the Transform tool, Ctrl or Command T, notice that it does have constrained proportions checked in the Options bar. I'll click on the green check mark and now if I go back to my shape layer, press Ctrl or Command T and click and drag, notice that I do have constrained proportions checked. So it seems to vary with shapes. Just know that pressing the Shift key will do the opposite of what the options bar says regarding constrained proportions. Another quirky area has to do with the print dialog box. There's no way to deselect center image and individual prints doesn't work in the editor, but it does work in the organizer print dialog box. Watch my video on printing to get the scoop on that and to learn some easy workarounds. Even with a few quirks, I consider Photoshop Elements 8 to definitely be worth the upgrade. As a scrapbooker, my favorite new features are being able to move photos and elements from the project bin to my scrapbook page on the desktop without them turning into smart objects and having the name of the file on the layer that's created. I also enjoy having guides available. Photographers will enjoy the Recompose tool, the Panoramic Exposure tool, and People Recognition for tagging in the organizer. And the user interface is really quite nice. I think you're going to like it. And finally, my DVD-ROM called Learn Digital Scrapbooking is included free inside the Windows version of Photoshop Elements 8 exclusively at Costco. It should be available around mid-October 2009. It has over six hours of training that will help you master Photoshop Elements 8. Look for my name, Linda Satgast, on the label. So there you have an overview of Photoshop Elements 8. For more in-depth information, be sure to watch my other videos on Photoshop Elements 8. This is Linda Sadcast with ScrappersGuide.com.